This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hi, I'm Jill Rappaport, and welcome to another edition of Rappaport to the Rescue. You know, I went to the most amazing event this week. I've talked about her before, Donna Karen, the incredible fashion designer. She has a beautiful home on the water in the Hamptons. And every summer, she throws these very private movie screenings, and then you get to see a great film. She did one just this week, and we were all very socially aware of staying six feet apart, wearing our mask. Everybody was very safe and very conscientious. And she screened a very interesting film. It was called Tesla, starring Ethan Hawke and Kyle MacLachlan. And the reason I'm talking about this, I'm sitting at this table, everybody six feet apart or mingling around. And right across from me is Candace Bergen. And we start talking. What do we start talking about? Animals, animals in need. She has two rescue dogs. Then I look and there's Edie Falco. What do we start talking about? Rescue dog. She's a huge animal advocate. I came literally with Christy Brinkley, but we followed each other because we didn't want to sit in the same car because we wanted to be safe. And we talked about her dog, Chester, her rescue dog. I looked down the table. There's Hugh Jackman and his wonderful wife, Deborah. They're talking about animals. Everybody seems to have that in common. As I'm sitting there, this beautiful black lab comes running up. I don't know why he came to me, probably because I have some part of my six rescue dogs on my clothes, whether it be the hair or the smell. The dog comes running up to me. Donna Karen says, oh, there's my rescue dog. I met this very private party, A-list celebrities. And what is the common denominator? Animals and animals in need. And I've talked about this in earlier shows. It's always been the biggest icebreaker for me to talk about pets and how people love them so much. So it just made me feel so good, not only to be at this event where everybody was very aware of what was going on, but to see people that I really love and admire, but more important, talk about how we need to help our animals. So it was a great night. The message was so important. And I love these people for what they're doing for animals in need. Now, coming up today, I adore this man. I call him the hardest working guy in show business, the world's most famous weatherman. Who doesn't love Al Roker? Al has a new book out, his 13th book. Can you believe it? That's what I mean by the hardest working man in show business. We will have a one-on-one with Al, and we're going to talk about his rescue dog, which I happen to get for him. Coming up. Want to know who the latest trendsetters are in Hollywood? How about Irish setters? Find out who's been spotted with Spot, chowing with their chow, and shopping for Gucci with their Poochie. Get, get the scoop on all the latest celebrity pet patter right here. Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Joe Rappaport. And my guest today really needs no introduction because his credits are a mile long. He's the one and only Al Roker, by far the world's most famous weatherman. He's the host of the Today Show's Third Hour. He's an actor. He's been on Broadway. He's an author. He's written 13 books. And his latest one is Al Roker. You look so much better in person. Al, nobody (laughs) works harder than you. Is retirement a four-letter word for you? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, somebody else may decide it is, but uh, (laughs) I'm, I'm... I'm having too good a time. You know, it's, uh, look, it's, it's a tough time right now. And, and a lot of people are suffering and, and going through really difficult times. But, um, uh, you know, for, for us, you know, we, we've been okay. We've been upstate and, uh, just kind of enjoying the summer and fortunate that, you know, like a lot of folks, we can work from home. You know, a lot of people don't have that luxury. And, you know, I talked about how this is your 13th book. Every time I turn on the TV, there you are. You're in a million articles. It's unbelievable. And I would think in the beginning with this pandemic, and you were thinking to yourself, I'm coming out with a book, not the best timing. But yet look at the publicity. Look at how many people cannot wait to talk to you about this book. 
Oh, thanks, Jill. You know, it, it's funny. It originally was supposed to come out June 2nd, and I pleaded with the publisher. I said, can we push this back? Because, you know, I, I just was worried we would be where we were, you know, like in, in the middle of June, beginning of June, where, you know, it was a really, really tough time in this country and, quite frankly, around the world. So, you know, and look, we're still in a tough time, but, you know, people are starting to come out of it a little bit, depending on where you live. And so you know, they acquiesced. And so we went with July 28th. And I think that's that's worked out better. And there's so many great stories in here, which we're going to get to in a moment. But our common denominator, I go back decades with you when I was local at WCBS, you were at WNBC. And we've known each other. I always wanted to do a show with you. I had so much fun working with you for decades, literally 23 years on the Today Show. But I am the proudest of everything we've ever done together, all the segments we've done together. The thing that means the most to me is that I was able to facilitate the adoption of your beautiful pepper. Bring pepper into your home and with your family. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. She just turned eight, when we think around eight. And, you know, she's become this little grand dame, but she's still, in the sense, kind of like a puppy. You know, she'll run like crazy. She chases the frisbee. She's had a great time up here because normally, you know, we're in the city and it's it's harder for dogs to run. But up here, you know, she's chasing squirrels and just having a good time. You know, we're a little, you know, we can't let her roam too far because we've got like coyote and fox right. and bear up here. and peregrine falcons and <laughs> so and you heard yeah. about meredith meredith Vieira was my first interview for this show her dog jasper was attacked by a coyote 16 really? years old and survived had wow. itches so you have to hear the story it's truly miraculous wow. that that dog survived so yes you have to keep an eye on them at all times yeah. and i remember when i first brought pepper i came to your home yep. and you said you know i have to have the kids come one by one and let's have then meet her. And it was so wonderful to see well, the relationship well, with Nick. I don't know if you remember, but there was actually another dog that, yes. <laughs> that, that maybe this would be the dog. And the guy you were working with, Bill, he said, you know, I've got another, let me just bring this one up. And, you know, Nick, who was at that time kind of frightened of dogs, you know, Pepper just climbed into his lap and started licking him and he was giggling. And, and it was, it was really, I mean, it was, and then Leela came home. And that was it. You know, she was uh, love at first sight. And the funny thing is, Deborah is her alpha. You know, I mean, you can have Pepper on your lap, rubbing her belly. You know, she's in a semi state of, you know, catatonia, just thrilled. (laughs) And Deborah walks through the room and it's like, oh, pardon me, got to go. And she's, you know, isn't that how you are too? Yeah, pretty (laughs) much. Pretty much. I go. And we should mention that you have been married 25 years. It'll be 25 years in September. Incredible. And, you know, Al, I don't have to tell you, we've been hearing a lot of stories lately. This pandemic has been a little frightening in so many ways, but it's also put an incredible strain on a lot of relationships. And yet you two seem to have thrived. Well, look, we like everybody, you have your moments, but you know, you, again, you look at this and you've got to be filled with gratitude that you've got a good situation. You know, you're, you're not wanting, you know, there's so many other people who are suffering. So, you know, whatever little differences pop up, you're kind of like, okay, let's get over ourselves. That's right. And you've learned to really understand what's going on and appreciate all of the gifts and blessings that you have. Not only Pepper, who I would imagine, you know, your children, your life, but Pepper added a lot of joy and comfort during the pandemic because you really got to spend, I would imagine, quality time with her. You've never been with her so much. Yeah, no, I mean, I haven't traveled and I took a trip to Tennessee to do something with Nick uh, about two weeks ago. But up until then, I, the last time I traveled was the end of February. So it's been nice. You know, it's uh, I got started a garden out back and, uh, and this know, cooking show, isn't Nick doing a cooking yeah, we're show doing with a little you? cooking thing that just kind of grew organically, no pun intended, but I was starting to do some inner, you know, Instagram cooking things. And Deborah said, why don't you have Nick help you, you know, film them. And I said, okay. So it just kind of grew into this thing where, to the point now where if I do anything without Nick cooking wise, they're like people are like, Where's Nick? We like you, but where's Nick? Where's Nick? <laughs> Is he a better cook than dad? No, he's not, but he's he's a <laughs> funny kid and uh you know, he asks questions that I think the average person who's not a cook would ask. So, you know, he's he's uh, added a lot to the program. 
You know, I have to tell you, I have a lot of your books and I just, see, got this one right here for our listeners. I'm holding it up right now. And everyone gets such a kick out of the title. I mentioned it at the top of the show and leading into you, but I love, you know, you look so much better in person. You know what, Al? I kind of heard the opposite for me, which was more depressing. I don't know how you feel, but if someone says, you know, you really look great on TV, then you're thinking, so I look like garbage in person. (laughs) Well, but here's, here's the thing for me, at least. Because, well, you know, I literally, I would hear it every day, you know, pre-pandemic, you know, I'd go out to the window and shake hands with folks on the plaza and, uh, which I don't know what we'd be doing that again. I don't know. Never anyway, again, right? They would say invariably once a day, somebody would say, oh my gosh, you look so much better in person. And I know they think it's a compliment, but I actually make my living on TV. So that's not really obviously it hasn't hurt you hello not 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 so much but you know it's an odd and and i think people are nervous when they're they meet somebody for the first time whether it's on tv or not and so i think that sounds complimentary but not so much well i'll tell you looking at you you know people do really believe that you have the perfect life i mean they see you on tv they know about your lifestyle they see your beautiful family you've got the wonderful rescue dog and the book is very poignant because you really talk about so many things chances you've taken things that you've done and always to not be afraid and leela was very instrumental in that messaging right oh absolutely Uh, uh, at one point it's a chapter we break them up into what we call altruisms and one of them is uh, you know always say yes never say no and i got a call from my agent wanting to know oh would you want to be in the play waitress the musical and i said oh they want me to be the hunky dr palmeter you know woos (laughs) jenna i said no they want you to be old joe (laughs) old joe Um, emphasize old old joe (laughs) i mean literally Almost every other actor who's played old Joe is like in their late seventies and early eighties on their way out. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, what does that say? Okay. You know what? In any (laughs) event, I, so the guy said, my agent said, why don't you go watch the show? See if you don't want to do it. So Leela came with me and at the time she was at LaGuardia school of performing arts, you know, fame school and, uh, show finishes. And I said, I don't think I can do this. We were, she's dead. It's Broadway. Who says no to Broadway? I said, but there's a song. She goes, I timed it. It's two minutes and 20 seconds. You can talk on pitch. You know, <laughs> isn't that amazing? But and look so at her parents. I said, Hello. Yeah, but I said, yes. And it was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. So much. So I went back a year later and did it for another eight weeks. I mean, it was, and you know, everybody said, oh, well, how could you do that? The, the Today show. It was so invigorating. And I think that's the thing. You know, people say, oh, I have find time to write a book. And we find time to do the things we love. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's one of the things I say in the book is, you know, if you want to make your day better, get up an hour earlier than you need to. That's yeah. what I live by. I always say, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. So, you know, it's been a fun, it was fun writing the book in that there were all these things that had happened that as I was talking it through, I had forgotten happened. And I think I thought, well, maybe now I better write this down because I'm getting old. I'm going <laughs> to, it's going to be, you're like, going to be old I mean, Joe, be old Joe, <laughs> old Al sitting in the corner and, you know, Leela or De- Courtney said, yeah. kids. See, Grandpa <laughs> actually used to do things instead of just being a veg over there. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, Leela taught you that very poignant and important lesson. Was there anything in your life that you passed up? And if Leela would have been there next to you, you would have done You know, I don't, I don't think so because I've tried to say yes to as many things as I can. I just thought that that was so far out of my wheelhouse because I think, look, we're all afraid of failing. And in this line of work, we fail publicly. And my biggest concern, especially in that instance, was that, you know, the the cast and the crew would think, oh, who's this Jamoke coming here? He's, he's a weatherman. You know, and I can tell you, Jill, the crew and the cast could not have been sweeter, could not have been lovelier. And I keep in touch with a lot of them still. And my heart goes out to them because you look yeah, at Broadway no work. and it is, it's decimated right now. Now they're talking about like January of 2021. Look, there's not going to be a Radio City Music uh, Christmas Spectacular. Right. No, no Rose this. Parade. Still waiting to find out if there's going to be a Thanksgiving Day Parade. You and know. you wonder, what about the Super Bowl? I mean, really, how is this all going to happen? Yeah. Especially now with all of these players getting sick. And, you know, I look at you and you've been doing the most of your life. And, you know, you've really had to reflect on a lot of things during this period. 
And I've had people say to me, I was at an event just last night and I brought you up because I said I was interviewing you for this podcast and how I got you your rescue dog. And they said, when's he coming back to the studio? And you know what? That's probably a question that you're getting a lot. I happen to love you at home too, but I miss the dynamic. Yeah, well, it's it's tough. It's tough. Uh, And part of the problem is right now is that we can only have a limited number of crew. The distance, yeah. In in the studio. Like there's no audio person. You remember the way it used to be. We had six cameras. We had two audio assist people. We had five or six stage hands. We had a couple of two or three floor directors. And my favorite, makeup and hair. Yeah, we had makeup and hair. Yeah, I mean, all these Of course, you don't miss the hair. No, I've never missed the hair. And the makeup (laughs) is minimal, obviously. So the more of us, the on-air folks that come back, the more they have to have support people. And right now, I I think what we'll probably do is, you know, after Labor Day, kind of do like what Savannah does and and Craig has done, where it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like what Nick's school is going to do. You know, he'll be in school two, I think two days a week and online three days a week. So, you know, I'll probably do kind of the same thing, come in a couple of days, two, three days, and then, uh, you know, be online, you know, a couple of days. You know, and here, this is your 13th book. And this one touched on so many important things and, and sensitive issues that you dealt with in your life. But I feel another book could come out of this because this has really been a very unusual chapter in your life. Yeah. No you know, pun intended, I, well, which I know. could lead to another book. Well, it's funny you say that because I was trying to convince our publisher you know, that maybe we should push it back because I feel like I should write something about this, but they they had already they had already started publishing it, so printing it, so couldn't do it. But look, there's nothing ever been like this, and and by the way, not just this, but of course uh, the economic turmoil and the social upheaval that's been going yes, on, the, yes. the 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 social awareness that has happened in this country. I mean. It's really mind-boggling that this perfect storm, if you will, of different situations all come together. Yeah, and who would have thunk, you know, that we would be sitting here talking about these things. And you, Mr. Slap, you know, people's palms and hugging people. Everybody wants to grab you. You're, you are, you know, the physical person in the studio, outside in the promenade, and then you're in your living room, you know, you're relegated to being alone, but with Deborah in the next room or Nick. Sure. But oh, yeah. it's such no, a look, different time. And, and part of it too is, and I, listen, I have to be cognizant of this. You know, I'm the oldest person on the show. I'm uh, besides not as old as old Joe, but, you know, uh, <laughs> but I'm in that, that risk group, you know? So, and I don't think of myself as, I mean, I'm going to be, I'm going to be 66 years old this month. And I, I just. Sounds young I'm, to me. I, I know, you know, we're, we're young whippersnappers, but you know, That's right. it, it's like one of those things like, well, you know, you got to be careful. So it's a balancing act that, that, that many, many people have to go through that whole that whole concept. And you know, Al, because of everything you've done and you know, you do have a really, really great life. Is there anything that you say you haven't turned down, but that you are dying to do? And I shouldn't use the word dying that you really want to do that. You really want, you know, here's the thing. I I, I write about this in the uh, introduction. I've never had a plan. I mean, I never wanted to be on TV. I wanted to work in television. I wanted to be a producer or writer. Uh, I want to be somebody like our old pal, Jackie Olensky, you know? And then I, Ended up getting a job on TV. Well, I'll just do this. And one by one, these things happen. But it wasn't, I'd love to say, oh, I had this grand plan. But who has a plan? Or if you do have a plan, look at something like what's happened in the last six months. Right. Everybody's plans have gone out the window. So, you know, I um, I don't know that there's anything. You know, there was a, a time, I think, where I would have wanted to do a show like uh, Regis and Kathy Lee. You know, we lost our our dear, dear friend Regis. And you know, I think that time has passed, but getting to do the third hour of today where we get to do different kind of stories and interview different kind of people and, and even on the Today Show, that kind of scratches that itch. So to be honest, I don't I don't know that there's anything, you know, maybe if I could build out a little cooking show with Nick, maybe we do something like that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. Well, you've got enough balls in the air, juggling enough things. It's pretty amazing. And, you know, you do have the nine o'clock hour. You know, people think first and foremost, definitely the most famous weatherman in the world, but you are also a very revered, beloved talk show host. I consider that, you know, it's a talk show. It's a great hour and you get to show 
a different side of your personality. You get to interview people. You get to go to events. I mean, hey, you were on the red carpet as much as I was, and I was oh, the entertainment reporter. <laughs> yeah. So you do get to do all of that. And the celebrities obviously love talking to you, which is so wonderful. But I do think after watching you, especially the last few months, that there would be another book here because I see a whole different side of you as you reflect on the air. And well, we'll see, those are we'll see how this I one does. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to I folks think, like you, I think it'll do okay, but we'll see. I think you're off to a great start. And again, I'm so grateful that I was able to help with Pepper. Is there a chance you may get another rescue dog no, out? You know, you know where to go. No, I know. Here's the thing. I consider Pepper, and I've had a number of dogs in my, my day from when I was a kid. And Pepper is about the best dog I've ever had. And as I've said to Deborah, I said, you know, I would hate to come up with another dog that doesn't live up to Pepper and not inconsequentially. What if they don't get along? You know, so I'm I'm one of those people. I was like, quit while I'm ahead. You know, uh, uh, we got <laughs> is a she terrific... in the room listening to this. No, she's, love it. She, De you see, if Deborah were oh, here, Alpha. she'd be here. Yeah. yeah. But, no. And Deborah just adores her. Yeah. I was so happy when I first, you know, the first couple of weeks and Deborah was like, I'm in love, but isn't it great? I mean, she really just puts the whole family, just yeah. makes them all one big mush, right? She, she's a good, <laughs> she's such a great little girl, you know, she just, and she's got those big eyes. She's just a cutie. Oh, uh, well, Al, as always, it is so great to talk to you. I miss you. I miss, I miss you seeing too, you and I miss being with you. And thank you so much for being a part of Rappaport to the Rescue. We try to each week educate people to the importance of rescue and adoption and how really these animals have changed our lives. And oh, especially please. During this time. Yeah, no, I mean, that's been the, if there's been any silver lining, I think it's the number of people who have, uh, adopted rescues and other pets who need adoption, you know, realize that they needed somebody to help fill their lives. And uh, boy, what a great one. I mean, again, it, it's been a horrible way to find it, but if there can be, you know, and usually in every bad situation, there is some good that comes of it. Yeah. It's the ultimate who rescued who, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Al, there's some horses available too. And I know you got some land there, so let me know. <laughs> yeah. You know how I feel about horses. I mean, I, I think they're magnificent animals, but the fact is, no horse really wants you on it. They are tolerating you. <laughs> they will put up with it. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to let you stay here, but don't mess around with me. <laughs> at any point. Enough is at, enough. <laughs> at any point, any horse can decide, you know what? I've had it. And you are off of them when they want, whether you want to be or not. Again, magnificent animals. They're just beautiful. But I can look from afar. You're beautiful. <laughs> and pet the nose, right? Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time. Hey, Trigger, why the long face? Yeah. <laughs> and again, great book. I've been reading through it. I've been having so much fun. Al Roker, you look so much better in person. It is really a lot of fun. And here's to number 14. I'm predicting All right. now. Thank you, Julie. Great to see you. Thank you, you so much. Really appreciate it. All right. When we come back on Rappaport to the Rescue, it's the Jill Bill section. Bill Berloni coming up. We wear fur and we're damn proud of it. What? And our four legs and our tail. And we go to the bathroom outside. Well, we may not be too proud of that. <laughs> Sniff around, then mark your spot right here. Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, and that was such a fun interview with Al. And now it's time for the Jill Bill section of the show. Of course, you know my partner, Bill Berloni. He is on location at Humane Society of New York. And Bill, you have a really great job there. Every week you go and you really help these animals in need hopefully find a wonderful home. Tell us about your role there. My role here is I'm the Director of Animal Training and Behavior. And each week I come in and I uh, evaluate the new dogs that come in and cats. I'm also set up training protocols. And I set up training protocols for them to get better to be adopted. And that really makes such a difference because, as you know, when they come in, their situation is usually horrific and they're scared, they're frightened, and you help them to get acclimated and to become 
hopefully viable for families. You know, you train them, you take them out, you show them love and attention, and you've had incredible success, haven't you? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, not, you know, Jill, not every animal's damaged. Some of them are just unfortunate, and they come in and find homes real quickly. But right now, I have one of our seniors on my lap. His name is Buddy, and I thought, while I'm doing this interview, let him be with me and just get some quality time one-on-one. And tell us a little bit about him. How old is this super senior? And you know I always say, Bill, seniors are my favorite breed. I know. That's why I brought him in for you. He's 10 years old, and he's a Shih Tzu. And being a Shih Tzu, he was with an owner who wasn't the leader you know, didn't protect him. So Buddy would walk down the street and try to bite other dogs and bite other people, you know, and we tried to explain to the gentleman that he had to protect him and he couldn't understand it. So he gave him up for adoption. I'm looking at you. Okay. Our listeners can't see what I'm seeing. They can only hear this story, but I'm looking at this fur angel cuddled up in your lap. You have your arms wrapped around him. He is, from what I'm witnessing and looking at, the very opposite of what you're telling me his problem was. Exactly. And that's the example of getting the wrong dog for your lifestyle. This is an active dog and the gentleman needed a quiet dog. So unfortunately, after seven years, he gave him up. And that is so heartbreaking because he's 10 years old. Now, you and I both know when people come into the shelter, what are they drawn to? The puppies, the young ones. This is not going to be an easy adoption, even though I love the seniors, you love the seniors. We know they've been there, done that. They'd rather lay on the couch than eat the couch, I always say. They're often housebroken. They just want to chill their couch potatoes in the best way possible. But you know it is a very difficult adoption. People tend to just keep walking once they see the age on the card. Absolutely. I think they worry about the cost of maybe the end-of-life care. But- What other dog can you get that will sit on your lap right away and be your best friend? They've had all the life experiences, right, Jill? Yeah, exactly. Now, what are you going to do with this dog to make him a more viable adoption? What are you going to do to help him along and so that he'll be hopefully a better fit with the right person who hopefully will walk in soon? Well, we've already transformed him back into the dog he was, the dog who likes being walked, who likes being picked up. And we don't let him get ahead of us to protect us. We stay ahead of him. So he's How long has he been there? He's been here for two years. Oh, that is so heartbreaking. I mean, you think about it. And now that he's 10. So what are you going to do now? Because at 10 years old, it's extremely difficult. Once they enter double digits, your work is really cut out for you now. (laughs) Exactly. So what I'm doing, we're bringing him onto our show. We're talking about him here. We had him on Broadway Barks. He was featured on Bernadette Peters' Broadway Barks. And we're just networking him because now he's just a really good ambassador. And now that our shelter is almost empty, we can put him out front. And I wish people could see this face. What an angel. What a sweetheart. Bill is literally kissing his forehead and hugging him. And he's just cradled under your arm. (laughs) He is a sweetheart. So for everybody listening, please take a chance on this dog. He's at Humane Society of New York. He's in great shape yeah. health-wise, right, Bill? No yeah. no issues? Nope. And you've really gotten him to be very cuddly. He doesn't seem to be aggressive with other dogs or people now. You've really worked those kinks out. And so he really is almost the perfect pet. There is no such thing as perfect, but he's as close to it as you can get, right? And being a Shih Tzu, he's still playful. He'll still chase a ball for us and play with us and strut down the street. So he's not completely done yet. He's a great companion. Oh, well, please open up your hearts and homes to this dog. And what people need to understand, Bill, and I think you'll agree with me, don't look at the age. It's like with people too. I say that about myself. Do not look at the age on the card, please, because you never know how much more love and life they have left to give. And often with these seniors, I've seen it myself with my senior dogs, you think you're nervous, you'd see an age and they thrive and they end up exceeding the years you ever thought you would have with them. Absolutely. So give us the information again for those who are listening who would be interested in this wonderful pooch. To put in for an application for Buddy, go to humanesocietyny.org. You'll see his resume there and you'll see an adoption application. And I should add that he's had the training of the wonderful, famous Bill Berloni for two years. So 
that is something that most dogs don't ever get. And so you know he's already ahead of the game because of you, Bill. Yeah, exactly. And I'm so happy that we were able to do this interview from the society today. Yes, and hopefully we will do many more. We want to get him a home. And obviously any dog that you're working with there today, we're hoping they find a home as well. Thanks so much, Bill. And until next week, I'm Jill Rappaport. And you know what I always say, everybody, stay positive. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.